<laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Many of y'all can relate. Many of you are familiar with the, with this money. Don't laugh. <clears throat> I was born during the, or what some may assume the, uh, towards the end of Jim Crow. I am the son of sharecroppers. And we was poor. But even when I was growing up, we never saw this. Wouldn't see this later. Later on. <clears throat> but we was poor. And our people was trying to make it. And later on, because we were poor, my family could give their children nothing because they had nothing. So my mother inherited nothing. So we hear these stories that soul brothers and sisters, we need to uh, concentrate on creating what we call generational wealth. We're going to talk about that in a later topic, this uh, idea of generational wealth. But we understand generational poor. We understand generational poverty. Dr. King, before he was assassinated, was planning what would they would call the Poor People's March. Poverty in 1968 was an issue, and poverty is still an issue in 2021. Within the richest nation, or one of the richest nations on this planet, the citizens whose children the government would take to fight for this nation, yet their parents poverty-stricken. Or maybe that's one of the reasons why we need impoverished people so that we can exploit them, use them for our factories and dangerous jobs and War, because they're just trying to survive. <clears throat> I know about poverty. I know about trying to survive and making it. I was raised on this kind of money. I'm not shame, and I would not try to embarrass, make mockery or belittle any of us in a position that we need this type of help. However, when we talk about generation of poor, generation of poverty, there are those who abuse the system. There are those who exploit the system and they happily pass down poverty to their children and do not motivate or inspire their children to want better because this is not living. This is barely making it, barely surviving. Nobody should want that for their children. Even so, I was raised this way and everything that I have gotten in life I had to work for my first car, my first this, my first that. Nobody can say they gave Angel Snup Nup 7 nothing. 
I wish they would have. I, I don't mind the help. I probably could have done a whole lot better had I gotten some kind of help. Nobody gave me nothing. Every penny, every dime I had to scrape, I had to work hard to get. Nobody gave me nothing. So here we are in 2021, 2022, the year. And in my life, Unfortunately, I had a setback, and it caused me to lose about 10 years of my life. So everything that I worked for or little that I was able to get, mind you, still living in poverty, I lost everything. And then when I get out of incarceration, nobody wants to hire you because you have this label put on you, criminally insane or an ex-con, which makes things already bad that you, you come from a poor background. But then when they label you, criminally insane or they label you um, an ex-con, it makes things worse. But like everything else in my life, I work. I refuse to take no for an answer and I continue to move forward. And I pray to God and my God was a truck. Your God might be Allah. Your God might be Jesus. I pray to my God, which, which turned out to be a truck, semi-trailer, took care of me, answered my prayers. I have those who laugh at me for whatever reason, but at the same time, you take. There's a person who took $50 from a raffle that I did. And you have women laughing and giggling. And they took money from the person who's criminally insane that lost 10 years of my life. But I'm not on food stamps. I'm not begging nobody for anything. I'm not I'm not entering your raffle to get $50. What does that What does that make you look like? I can say I gave to you. You can't say you gave nothing to me. Now, mind you, 10 years of my life was taken, so I couldn't do nothing to continue to improve my life. So while I am locked up for 10 years, what was these doing? Whatever they were doing, they still have to beg somebody to put tires on their car. They still are is happy to take $50 from a raffle. Go to the store and feed you. You're still not able to take care of yourself. You need a person who was locked up for 10 years, who come out that work hard, and you have to become a parasite and a leech and wait for them to give you something. <laughs> Woo! You need a raffle. You happy somebody gave you $50. And then you won't give the $50 back to show that you don't even need it because you do need it. Because you're suffering. You don't have nothing. You let 
you let a person who was locked up for 10 years come out and you need them. They don't need you. I don't need nothing from you. A person that's locked up for 10 years can come out and give away $6,000 or more. And you can't do nothing. You barely living. You can barely pay your bills. You don't give nobody nothing. You suffering, scraping. You let a person who been locked up get a 800 credit score. What is your credit score? Don't have any credit at all. Using your children to buy things because your credit is gone. Don't have no credit. What is your credit? 500, 400 or no credit? And they laugh. How can you laugh? That's show how pitiful and pathetic you are. A person that's an ex-con can start a business on a large home, 800 credit score. And here you are, never been locked up, don't have a traffic ticket, and you don't have nothing. Well, the difference between the ex-mental patient and the ex-con is that the ex-con and the mental patient, they work and they work hard. But the faceless troll and these women, you don't hear about their work. So they wait to get benefits from the ex-con and the mental patient. How does that make you look? Yeah, I'm an ex-con. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a ex-mental patient or whatever. But who's begging who for what? Here you are. Congratulations. You won $50 in a raffle. Thank you. I show sure appreciate that money. They don't give nobody nothing. What did you do with your life? The whole 10 years the ex-mental patient was locked up, the years that the ex-con was locked up, what, what was these people doing? Clearly they weren't doing any kind of work because they got to sit back in the cut and wait for the ex-con to get out of jail. They got to wait for the mental patient to get out of the crazy house so they can have a little something, something, because they have nothing. Congratulations. You won $50 in the Angel Snub Nub 7 raffle. And they happy about it. The best thing ever happened in their life. <laughs> they bragging about the tires. And whatever else they got. But guess what? The ex-con and the mental patient still don't need nothing from you. But you would still take. Because you have nothing. Again, the difference between the ex-con and the mental patient. Is that we have confidence in ourselves. Pride in ourselves. And we go to work. But these people don't work. <laughs> That's the difference. So who really isn't the ones in bad shape? Who is the one? <laughs> Jot down your comments. Is it, is it that difficult to answer? 